Hi, welcome to this edition of Stalking the Wild Auto Harp Special Prism Edition, Episode 2. Today we're going to talk about the Prism Auto Harp and how, um, how I do the left hand fingering on the Prism. The Prism requires that you press two buttons at once, which um, uh, some people find daunting. Um, but uh, it's still much easier than than doing all the fingerings on a guitar neck or something else. Um, but to, to play a simple chord like a major chord or a minor chord, you press two buttons that are adjacent to each other. And some people wonder about, do you press it with one finger or do you press it with two fingers? And the answer is yes. Um, when I started learning the prism, there was no precedent. Uh, I was the first player, and um, so um, I was free to sort of figure it out, and that's what I did. And uh, gradually, my body taught me um, what the best methods were. And um, I think these are the best methods, but you may find other things, and there is no precedent, and there are no rules. Um, I've just found what works for me. So I'm going to share that with you. Now in setting this video up, um, I discovered that the prism is a very difficult thing to film because if I get an angle that works to show what my left hand is doing, like from above, and then I start to play, then this hand comes in the way of my left hand and you can't see what I'm doing. Um, or um, things happen that interfere with the lighting and there's these tight ca camera angles and it's pretty impossible to show it all at once unfortunately. So um, what I'm going to do is do my best to talk about it but today we're talking about the specific things that I do to do the left hand fingering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, move my camera down so that you can see it from this angle and I can swivel my seat and hopefully you'll be able to see everything you need to see. So the prism, um, if you didn't see the last video, I explained what's in each row. All right, Bre basically these are minor six sevens, these are major scales, and these are ninth chords. All right, and the majors are played by playing two consecutive or um, um, two buttons that are right next to each other. For example, right up here, this is my key of C. I've got C, F, and G. All right, so here's C, F, and G. And you see that pattern is just like the Brian Bowers layout. Probably some Oscar Schmidt layouts too, because you have one, four, and five. But notice that I'm actually pushing down two buttons. I'm pushing down this one and this one. Okay? And I'm bridging them. I call this bridging when you press down two adjacent buttons with one finger. Okay? So by doing this, I can play melodies using the same fingering pattern that I used when I played standard chromatic, you know. But I'm pressing down two every time. All right. So in that respect, this is just like the Brian Bowers layout, except I'm bridging, which means that instead of playing with curved fingers, I'm playing with flatter fingers and coming in at more of an angle. So in order to do this, and I have to kind of show you the harp from the front, so let me see if I can pull this off. Um, normally we play the auto harp a little bit upright like this, all right, and it allows us to reach our arm around the side Okay, but in prism playing, um, right now I've got the auto harp sitting on my left leg. Um, in prism playing, I shift it to the right leg so that the harp is laying down more like a baby. 
and um, it, you know it's almost like I would cradle it in my arms and that brings my finger in at a different angle and I'm reaching around up here like this to do it now all of this is going to change depending on your the length of your arms the size of your harp your particular body's geometry and so you kind of have to play with that and find what's comfortable for you all right but so I'm reaching around this side and um, I'm bridging the buttons like this all right now that is one way of playing these buttons in other words do you play with one finger or with two fingers to play two buttons well that's the one finger way you bridge and the minors are up here you bridge between here and here all right now um, I'm not going to go into the advantages of the prism in this video but um, what it allows you to do is you can open chord like you can on a um, diatonic but instead of opening and closing the chords like this you're keeping the middle one down and you're opening the back one you're opening the ninth chord but keeping the middle chord down so that you get So I'm keeping the middle one down and pumping the felt on the back chord. All right. Now for blues, you do it the other way. You have to open the middle one and pump. You have to open the middle one and leave the back one down. And that's a little hard to do when you're bridging. All right. So that's where you start playing with two fingers. And here's the way you do that. All right. And this is this is where tricky camera angles uh, come into play. Um, I use a little square that I make with my fingers, all right? And each one of these represents two buttons, okay? My thumb and my index cover one chord like this. Thumb, index. And then my middle finger and my ring finger cover this chord like this. All right, so I can pump like this or pump like this. Now what happens here's my one chord and here's my four chord like this okay so these um, fingers start working in tandem but how do I do my five chord which is over here well I do it just that way I reach out with this the, this pair of fingers and grab my five chord like this and then I can either come back like that or I can step over like this from my four chord to my one chord. So I start doing this kind of behavior to cover my one, four, and five chord. It's sort of like if I only had, like, say I was, uh, heaven forbid, in an accident and I lost these two fingers. Could I still play the auto harp? Well, yes, I could. I would have to, I would have to do my chording with two fingers, but it would be very, very possible with a little adjustment. Okay, here in this case, I have four fingers, but they're working in pairs. So I have two double fingers, and I can toggle like this, like this, etc., etc. Okay, and again, reaching out for the minors like this. All right, so that's the way that I do it, and I go back and forth between the different methods um, based on what my fingers know they're going to need to do. And um, there's no rhyme or reason to it that I'm consciously aware of. I let my fingers lead me. I have practiced both methods of playing enough that my fingers just shift from one system to the other quickly and seamlessly. And I don't even really think about it. Okay, so that's how I do it. The nice thing about the prism is that it allows me to open chord in five keys instead of just two keys. 
and some people will say that a chromatically tuned auto harp does not sound as full as a diatonic to which I say wrong because I think that the fullness of a diatonic auto harp comes not from the double strings but from the open strings and the open chording and I get that very easily Plus, I get major sevenths and minor sevenths. And add nine chords and sus four chords by playing other pairs. And of course you have to get used to this. And in the future videos for Stalking the Wild Auto Harp um, pr Prism series, I'm going to be talking about the chords individually and um, what they sound like and where I use them and where you might want to try to use them. Um, what else? Um, well, I'll, de I'll deal with those in, in subsequent videos. I just wanted to show you today about my four finger little square technique little squares you know in pairs little squares in pairs like this and bridging okay and bridging works across the back and bridging works down here and then I use these are called forks where you're using two fingers to get buttons at angles okay and there's even chords that are separated out pretty far like this too. Uh, like this is a minor sixth. So all kinds of chords on here. Um, open scales in five keys and um, um, anyway more and more about the prism for the next few weeks. Um, so I'm Hal Weeks. My website is halweeks.com where you can go to find out about lessons with me online via Skype um, and um, all the details about that. And um, thanks for tuning in and watching this series. Remember to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and you will get the latest and greatest videos as they come out. So until we meet again, this is Hal Weeks for Stalking the Wild Auto Harp, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.